Hi everyone, my name is Christian Arzate Cruz and I'm a researcher at the University of Tokyo. In this video, I'm going to present to you a brief introduction to Interactive Reins Formal Learning, or Interactive RL for short, and an overview of our survey about this subject. The main objective of our survey is empowering HCI researchers and designers with a technical background in Interactive RL needed for effectively designing new interaction techniques and proposing novel interactive RL-based applications. We strongly believe that the HCI community needs this technical background to build interactive RL-based applications and techniques with a great impact on our everyday life. Now let's move on to interactive RL. Let's begin with a definition of range form and learning or RL. The RL paradigm is based on the idea of an agent that learns by interacting with its environment. Like in this example in which Mario, the learning agent, interacts with his environment, a game level of Super Mario Bros. While he's randomly exploring the environment, he finds this Goomba or enemy twice. The first time, uh, Mario kills the Goomba, but the second time, uh, our agent get kills get killed by it. But how our agent can improve his playing skill. Uh, for that, we usually need to model the problem the agent is facing by hand, so the agent knows which are good and bad states in the environment, and the actions uh, our agent can perform. And to do that, a common approach is modeling the problem as a market decision process or MDP. An MDP is an op an optimization model for an agent acting in a stochastic environment that is defined by a set of states S, a set of actions A, a transition function tree T, which defines the dynamics of the environment, a reward function R, which defines the positive and negative states in the environment. Then the, uh, the MDP or multiple NDPs that define a problem, like playing Super Mario Bros. in our previous example, will be the input to a solver, which can be, uh, for example, a deep neural network, an evol evolutionary algorithm, or the value iteration algorithm. Then the output of this uh, solver will be a policy that detects the behavior of an agent. This policy can be represented either as a binary tree, a table, or a neural network. On the other hand, an interactive RL approach involves uh, a human in the loop that tailors specific elements of the underlying RL algorithm to either improve its performance or produce an appropriate policy for a particular task. In the first option, Human feedback is used for finding an optimal policy faster when compared to not using any human feedback. The second option focuses on the agent alignment problem, which is the problem of aligning the agent behavior with the user's intentions, or making the bot playing as the user wants with a particular playstyle. For example, creating a bot for Mario that kills all the enemies. Now, in this figure, we can see the main components of an interactive RL application. We have an RL-based agent here, our friend Pac-Man, that learns by interacting with its environment, this maze with ghosts and pills, uh, from which usually the agent gets a reward. Then, we, ha we also have a, a human user here, who receives as input trajectories of the agent, so she or he can evaluate the performance of it and give feedback to the agent. The type of feedback, there are different types of feedback, it could be either like a just a good, uh, uh, like a critique, saying okay this uh, action that you perform in this state is good or bad, we'll explain more about this later. Now, let's see an example of a RL-based application. 
Yeah, this is the title of a paper that uh, uses reinforcement learning, but it's not interactive. It's completely automatic. The title is PCGRL Procedural Counter Generation via Reinforcement Learning. And and in this paper, authors uh, is presented an agent that learns how to build a game levels for different games, such as Sokoban and Zelda. Uh, the problem is modeled as an MDP and they use a proximal policy of op optimization algorithm as a solver. Now, how can we design an interactive version for this paper, for example? First, uh, we need to think about who the end user is. Is she a game developer or a non-expert? Second, uh, how the user will evaluate the results. In our example, it will be the quality of the game labels in this paper we are presenting. Uh, and third, how the user will communicate her feedback to the agent and therefore the, to the underlying RL algorithm. So for the first question on who's the end user, in our survey, we present uh, with detail the typification of the end user. Uh, we found that the most important features to typify an end user in interactive RL involves knowledge level, if she's an expert or, or not, preferred teaching strategy, and safety concerns. Safety concerns are, are for example, when you are designing for, uh, you are tr trying to guide a, a bot, for example, it's a robot that will interact with humans. So it's important to take into consideration safety concerns about the interaction between a robot and a person. Uh, in taking into account these features, we can introduce general design princip principles to guide HDS researchers and designers to create capable capable and economical interactive RL applications that users can understand and trust. Now, for the second, for the second question, how the users will evaluate the performance of the agent, we present uh, if how to create effective evaluation cycles in our survey. A fast evaluation of the agent's behavior can substantially reduce the time needed for each teaching loop, which is something very positive. Some of the approaches meant to lessen the evaluation process consist of evaluation techniques, visualization, and uh, another option, explanatory techniques. For the first option, uh, for example, we have crowd evaluations that distribute the evaluation task amount various users. For the second for the second one for visualization, we have for example tools for summarizing the agent behaviors. And for the last option, uh, we have um, build, in the building agent example will be to explain its decision procedure, like the bot is able to explain why he is performing certain action at a given state. And then for the third question uh, about the communication channel between the human and the bot, we present uh, the type, we describe all the types of feedback that the user can have. As we can see in this figure, in our survey, we detail all these options that the user has to give feedback and how each of them can modify the underlying RL algorithm as we can see here in this red box we have all these type of feedbacks and then we also explain in our survey how this can shape or modify all these um, features in the in a RL algorithm that could be the reward function, the policy, the exploration process, or the value function in general.